Welcome back, everybody, to the third episode of Myth, Magic, and Might uh, under the Flavored Enemy banner. Last time on Myth, Might, and Magic, or Myth, Magic, and Might, rather, uh, <laughs> um, or our heroes fought in three rounds of the Autumn Hollow Festival Tournament. They first fought a goblin on the back of a vulture, which turned out to be an accursed, uh, uh, one of one of a group of beings that have been afflicted with a curse from the Dark Lord, which renders them incapable of being anything other than evil. And uh, Priscilla decided to follow the Empire as they were dragging than killing him uh, to collect their eyes and give it to Frida for reasons I can't comprehend. But anyway, <laughs> during the second round of the <laughs> festival, um, you guys fought an old cat lady. And by old cat lady, I mean she was a old tabaxi who also had a bunch of displacer beast kittens. It was... <laughs> <laughs> it was a, a very difficult fight for very different reasons. Um, Ethically. <laughs> and finally, you guys completed the third round of the tournament after a... You guys completed the third round of the tournament in which you faced uh, uh, off against Brutus, an imperial lieutenant, who had his match end early as he tried to choke the life out of a beloved uh, NPC that everyone had met named Ryder Burroughs. And now our group of heroes, whose group name I will not say, uh, <laughs> find themselves... Hashtag follow us on, the, on OnlyFriends. <laughs> uh, the group of heroes find themselves outside of Ryder's the burned remains of Ryder's house after uh, because after defeating Brutus Rita, which shocked the world they burned down Ryder's uh, the captain, Alanis or Alanis burned down Ryder's house in retribution for what all of you had done and I just took now as we all stand out here. We're actually going to travel over to uh, Hayden is back in the village. Uh, he, uh, Hayden unfortunately had a, uh, a bout of his arcane hemorrhage acted up and he had to lie down and rest. Hayden, as you're sleeping, you recall a dream. More than just a dream. Um, you find yourself about three or four days in uh, to the week-long honeymoon that you took with your wonderful husband back on Vittore. It's very late at night, and you awake to find yourself sleeping uh, behi uh, s uh, behind you is Hayden in his full draconic form, uh, kind of wrapped around you and Castian in, uh, in your bed that you are collectively sharing. Um, Hayden is a magnificent red dragon. Uh, his body you is... Mean Jace, right? Uh, oh, gosh, dang it. I'm so sorry. Uh, Jace, sorry. You're Hayden's wonderful husband, Jace. Jace is a magnificent red dragon uh, who is incredibly much keeping you and your mutual husband Castian uh, very warm despite uh, without uh, the need for covers or anything like that uh, and uh, and again Hayden beside you is uh, yeah wrapped around the two of you is Jay uh, next to you uh, also on Jace's 
flank is Castian, your uh, your half drow elf boyfriend or husband with his be- uh, gray skin and majestic white locks. You want nothing more in this moment than to just stay in this beautiful cuddle, your head on Jace's flank, your hand intertwined in Castian. But you really gotta be. So, <laughs> despite how much you just want to stay in this bed, you find a way to crawl out of this cuddle pile. Uh, and as you return back, the breeze coming off of the ocean into the room uh, uh, from the open balcony when, uh, doors, a voice calls out to Never expected. It's almost draconic. And Hayden, you turn to see standing on the balcony in their humanoid form, Hollow Avaris, Jace's father. What do you think Jace said, or what do you think Hayden says in this? What the fuck are you doing? Leave us alone. You. <laughs> uh. You see him looking over at Jace and that earlier comment you can see a slight bit of something like pride cross his face which is weird to see from him but he he holds a hand up to you and he says relax I'm not here to harm you if I were Jace's instincts wouldn't let him sleep there's an adrenaline threatening their own Though, honestly, I'm not sure why he considers you two his horde seems impractical. What exactly is it that you want? Make it fast before I decide to kill you now, like I should have done. <laughs> How very amusing you think you can... His head whip... You want to find out? He, he chuckles, and, um... Jace... Uh, uh, Jace's father very irritatingly looks a lot like him. Except that, you know, of course he looks, you know, like a man in his well, you know, goatee, hair kind of pulled back, graying a little bit. And his eyes are probably the feature that most distinguishes him from Jace. They're they're the same color, but Hollow's eyes are just so focused and cruel in a way that you could never see in Jace. And he looks at you and he says, For many years now, I've kept him. He motions his head towards Jace for that he would have some of his mother's gifts, that I would be able to use them to complete a project I've spent decades in What I would ask of you is a deal. Help me convince him to create an item for me, much as he has for you. And he points at your ring. And if he does, I promise I will leave the three of you alone, and and none of you will ever see me ever again. I ever. He glares down at you. He, He... takes a step forward and you can see Jace like stirs in his sleep and he just calmly backs off. It's not a matter of I'm trying to be courteous and make a deal. I mean, I was under the impression that none of you wanted to see me. I'm here I am being an equitable adult and you children complaining. I don't understand. You are right. We don't want any... However, you have the audacity to show up here and ask for my help convincing your son and my husband to do something for you? I think the fuck not. Try again. He turns around, and as he leaves, he just turns his head and says, I've already offered this to Jace, but... I think you should help convince him because I'm offering to give him 
the one thing I've never given him all my years of raising his mother's name. And he flies away. And I will ask this before. Jace has already said no. So I'm not gonna... Jace said no, so that's it. I will say, do you tell Jace that this happened or not? I think, I think I would, I would spend some time trying to decide. Like, it's, it's not something I would want to keep from him, but when, it's a matter of when, when would be the best time. Yeah, because you don't necessarily want to, you know, interrupt your honeymoon to have this very serious discussion. Uh, so I will say that, like, uh, what? Oh, I was I was gonna ask a bunch of questions to try and find an answer, but I might be s- sidetracking. No, the no, plot. no. Uh, uh, what? What I will say that Jace says when you decide to confront him about this is, is yeah, my dad he he wants me to he wants me to make him an item that'll turn him into a star strider. You know, like one of those people that can walk from planet to planet uh i didn't you say your cousin was one of them uh y- yeah my cousin is this one that's a very very big ask. yeah i and w- oh god why honestly i don't know i i have a feeling that well the reason i've told him no is because i have this feeling that if i did it i it would take I don't know if I could do it, but if I did, I have a feeling it would take literally all of my strength from me. Like I I wouldn't be able to I'd be bedridden for the rest of my life, and I just I don't want that. And you can see he actually tears well, up a it's... little bit and he's like and he keeps holding her name over me. And I just I mean I don't I don't want to give up my future. I don't want to give up what we have. And he uh, grabs your cheek and he holds Castian's hand because Castian's also here. But but I would like to know so I could, you know, say hi. And with that, Hayden, you wake up. Wait. <laughs> God damn it. Oh. Uh. I, uh. Uh, uh, I had things. I had things to say. Dude, my husband. Oh, god damn which, it. In, it! Which you all, which you said to him in that moment years ago. Yeah. Uh, I guess, I guess, just for fun, what would you have said to him all those years ago when you talked about this? <laughs> I would have held his face and leaned in close and said, Darling, you have nothing to worry. I already told your father I will not be helping him. He said that you would already turn. I decided that was it. No matter what it was that he had to offer, I wasn't going to help him. You said no. It. And then, as far as your mother goes, we will we'll find her. I, you will know her. It just might not be as easy as your bastard father giving us some Aiden. We will find her. I don't, Aiden, I don't think she's alive anymore. But I don't know for sure. We won't know if we don't find her. <laughs> I, and, and I, and I think he just kind of starts crying and, uh, crying into your shirt. And when you wake up, you kind of reflect on the efforts that you and Castian have already made in this front. But, you know, every lead that you think that you have, you find someone else who Jace has already talked to. And in that... I'm not kidding. No. no. But, but it's a lot of dead ends and it's a lot of... Finding some of the hidden pain in someone that you love very much. Because you see how far they've gone. 
to try to just know his own mother's name. Have some form of closure, but nothing ever really comes up. And you find yourself awake now, kinda rubbing your chest, and you feel a lot better after having lied down. You look around to see that uh, most of your uh, most of the people have cleared out of the arena uh, that you were just at, um, and you see that there's a smoke rising in the distance, which, with your passive insight, I'll say, tells you that that's probably where your friends went. It it is the same direction that your ship is in. You do know that at the very least. Ah, oh, shit. <sighs> I guess we're gonna have to go see what they're up to. I hope no one is dead. Well, none of them are dead. Uh, you, hey, uh, Hayden, you walk up to the rest of the group. Uh, everyone, you find yourselves, uh, uh, having just put out the fire, uh, of Ryder's home. Uh, Ryder himself, uh, just kind of tracing his fingers over the picture of his comrades from nearly a century ago. Um, just kind of sitting on the stoop of where his house used to be. Um, he he just, a lot he's trying to process what he what all of you do. If I see Hayden walk up uh, uh, from the general area of town, I'll uh, walk over to him and say, hey, are you feeling a lot better? Uh, yes, uh, surprisingly, for the moment. I That's think enough. I'll be able to manage for a while, at least. This cannot, cannot go unanswered. No, we can't let them get away with this. I know we may be only friends, but if we can't protect these people, then at the very least, we can't avenge them. I agree. What exactly happened? Well, well, the dino do uh, the dino dicks decided that um, maybe they didn't like us humiliating their man. Maybe it'd be best if we so uh, burned Ryder's house down. Yeah, maybe it'd be best. But it's at least well, worth uh, at least I'm get if you have Ryder's like an answer. Ryder yeah. is not. I yeah. cannot tolerate them continuing to bully and uh, just push their weight around just because they can. I dealt with this firsthand. Something needs to be done. We could well, give Ryder some space, and then we can... Right. These people deserve Rosalind, better. Rosalind, you hear Ryder speak up and say, Bachman, you have an accent. Yeah, I grew up there. He just nods solemnly and just... The Empire took over... The Empire took over Rockman when I was 12. I remember. We tried. And he just stares at the picture some more, and he... And then he says out loud, almost like to no one in particular, I'm the only one in this picture who's still here. What do you mean, here? Is everybody else... This was taken over a hundred uh, like years move? ago. Or... Back when I was 18. And, oh. uh... And I'll say, like, Rosalind, and Frida, and probably Priscilla also, and Jialin, yeah, all... Everyone from this world would know that rabbit folk don't live that long. Like, usually only around 80 years. And certainly, and, uh, and even those that do are certainly not, like, spry enough to wield a hammer and wear heavy armor the way. Like, something's almost unnatural <laughs> about it. Seems that you have time on your side then, Ryder. <laughs> Is there any, like... <laughs> Can I like? He he touches the symbol of. Maybe um, roll, roll to see. Uh, yes, you can. Uh, you can roll a religion check to see. I keep forgetting that D and D Beyond does not work nicely on my computer. Mm. <laughs> I got the the <laughs> long rolls that take like five minutes to. to oh, roll that out. the physics engine stutters. Oh, yeah. It's so bad. Doesn't Roslyn have the act? Or Lana? Do you, who who got the action figure? <laughs> Uh, Lana has the action figure. Yeah, I have the action figure of the Time God. Um, just I'm holding it here. It's I'll, I'll say, in I'll package. I'll say uh, roll with advantage because of the action figure. <laughs> the action figure is right here in front of you. You yes. said religion. Nineteen. Yeah. Okay. 
So, Jialin, you know that Zeroam, on occasion, grant their uh, followers double their normal lifespan. But you also know that this isn't something that he does frivolously. In fact, Zeroam does absolutely nothing frivolously. Uh, you know that Zeroam only does this for people that he expects to do some incredible important task that they have to live long enough to complete. And and you get the sense with the um, with the holy sick that that. A writer might be similarly blessed. She, um, she'll reach out a hand to him as everybody was talking about, like, leaving him there to, like, sit with his thoughts. She, like, reaches a hand out, with, out to him and then says, Then that means that you still have a job to do, friend. Come with us. He, he almost doesn't look at your face and he just thinks, I failed at so much so far. He, he says, He thinks or he says. He says, but he grabs your hand, uh, but he grabs your hand anyway and pulls it. He, he, his steps are slow. She, like, Something's... dusts him off yeah, a little yeah. bit. Yeah, uh, Oh. She, like, dusts him off a little bit, straightens out his clothes, and then goes, failure is an other try. Come on, let's go. Besides... Oh, damn, that was good. <laughs> I, I, look at, I look at Frida and say, besides, we have something different now. Right. Magic. <laughs> These, <laughs> this empire controls with fear and strength, but they've thrived Brutality because brutality is more than strength. They've thrived because you all haven't had magic, but I have magic, and clearly that Frida has magic. I, I don't know. I haven't really thought about trying it again. But this is the kind of thing that brings people hope. This right. is the kind of thing that people like them in that town can rally behind. I think we should well, find the largest group of people and tell them exactly what happened here. The spark it absolutely. That's very good. <laughs> can I try to like, like with prestidigitation, maybe like have a little bit of like crackles from my finger just to see if I still feel like I can cast magic? Uh, you, it, effortlessly, effortlessly you create sparks. Right. Hmm. It seems... It seems... The age of might. I think I'd live... I think I'd the live to magic. see three ages. Now I feel old. <laughs> <sighs> well, the, the one I worship, she's called the Phoenix Queen. Fires like this, they're the start of birth. And I'm happy to cast my lot in with all of you. Even if we are just mm. not friends. entirely sure about that name, but okay. <laughs> I'm afraid it's something you're just going to have to deal. With. We're too lazy to come up with a name. Yeah, we're already kind of subscribed to. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ryder, if I know anything about fate, or Tarot's taught me, there's always more than one interpretation of something. Your failure. Um, or rather, just being defeated by Brutus is what allowed all of this to happen and gave you a front row seat to magic coming back to life in this world. Things aren't so black and white. You don't need to feel as though you failed anything. You still have a very important part to play in the story, I can tell. Well, I'll, I'll say it's not just tonight, Perhaps but... all the times that you tried in the past, I will say, maybe we shouldn't leave the townsfolk with no answers. Yes, uh, we... Happened. Let's... Let's, let's get a move on. I'm, I'm dragging my feet, so... Well, and, and, you, and you can see that like, uh, just naturally no. he walks a little bit faster than everyone, actually. Like, you have to rush a little bit to... He just naturally has a fast pace to his step. There he goes. Despite how old he is. <laughs> yeah. Perhaps... Are Jason and uh, yes, Gilgamesh yes, coming with uh, us? Yeah, Gilgamesh is coming behind, uh, because, you know, he's following his captain. I guess I can move and just follows. While we're walking back, could I make a check to assess the defensive build? Uh, of I guess Paul? roll insight or history for for tactics. Or, <laughs> the um, four. You know, I, 
there's a lot of really solid defensible terrain. It's flat. Um, there's like a forest surrounding it, so it's easy to be mm-hmm. snuck up on. Uh, and uh, you know, there's mm-hmm. all there's these farmlands, you know, what nice and flat and level, which is mm-hmm. great if you have artillery, which mm-hmm. you know the empire has. But like, hey, it's also good if you're shooting arrows at tanks. The empire has. <laughs> like, you're. This is a great yeah. spot. It's flat and yeah. level and. There's, uh, and all the buildings are, you know, that are like wood and, uh, thatch and, <laughs> yeah, all, uh, all of them are, you know, not, you know, they're not defensive buildings. Like, I, no, yeah, no, it's, uh, it looks pretty goblin safe, to, I wouldn't know much about <laughs> anything else. Yes, it's goblin safe. But... As we're walking, as we're walking back towards town, uh, do I see my uh, my family or my uh, masters um, around anywhere? Uh, all you uh, you see Harlow, your see Harlow uh, with Ilma uh, just kind of sitting on top of their shoulder, uh, <laughs> and uh, Harlow actually comes up to um. They, they, like, nod to acknowledge you, but then they turn their attention to Frida, and they... You have not learned these arts from any elementalist, have you? None of our ilk? Oh, no, no, um, I just read a lot of books, um, and I studied the tarot. A look to each other, and Ilma's like, yeah, see, 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 that's magic, that's not key, that's magic. There's, you can, you can feel the difference, and, uh, and Harlow, like, and Harlow, like, oh, very right, slowly yeah. nods, and magic is returned. But Rosalind, I'm... Yeah. I'm sorry, but we have to take this news back to our Empress immediately. Absolutely. I definitely agree that with magic returning, this brings great news for the people of... Uh, uh, the people of the Queendom, so... If you need to go, you need to go. I will, I will find a way to get, uh, uh, get a message to you. R- should right. I need anything? I, I don't mean to leave in such a rush, but I. Uh... It's all right. Make sure no, you. this is really bi- this is really big news for you guys. You should you... go. You need to get that message Tell back me, as quickly Frida, as you can. Do you, do you think that old enchantments might regain their magic soon? Well. Actually, I have this, um, well, this scarf here that, um, I was told by this nice woman had some magical properties in the past, and I actually rubbed my hand on this scarf just before, um, electricity shot from my fingers, so I think it's already <laughs> happening. And you see, like... Rosalind, you specifically can tell that, like, Harlow is actually getting a little emotional. She says, The peach tree will, will bear fruit again. Do you think? I believe. And I I know why she's getting emotional, and I, and I walk over to her, I put a hand on her shoulder, and I say, If magic is returning, I believe... I actually received some information earlier about... A guy in the town who may have settled across one of the dungeon entrances. So we may be able to investigate that and uh, get ma- more magic, even more magic released into the world. There is a good chance of that. So yes, mag- looks like magic. All of magic is returning. It may take some time. I really hope it's not contagious. Matt, no. <laughs> No, why would magic be contagious? We don't know how it spreads. I mean, I d- <laughs> it, it doesn't spread that way where I'm from. Well, it, it's a different I'm world. sorry, did you say you were from a different from here, world? Though. It's what I oh, I are that? we still keeping that secret, or are we letting that no. No, magic's out of the bag? Are we letting that out of the bag? Is there any oh, you've way already let it out of the bag. Uh, is there any way that I could roll I to know whether or not magic can be caught? <laughs> roll an arcana check. I. <laughs> oh God. I'm, um, I'm, I'm covering my face. 
Where I come from is a, you know, it's a figure of speech. It's just, <laughs> it three. doesn't mean to imply that I'm from an entirely different, you know, place of existence. Right, just, that was a ridiculous leap in logic. I apologize. <laughs> um, sorry, For point of God. reference, I rolled a 23 a deception check. Oh, yeah, they believe you. A 23 um, deception. Uh, Sister Jill, what did okay. you roll for your um, arcana? I got a you know what a you know what it's possible you might <laughs> magic might be contagious <laughs> I'm, I'm going and looking for somebody who sells masks huh. <laughs> we need to gather the town and rally the people we can't do this on I, our own but I was gonna we... say um, to the sisters uh, make sure that if you're sending a message to tell them the Empire burned down a man's house because of the thought of magic returning. Um, I mean, like, they saw it before. Harlow eyes, nods but... once very slowly and solemnly, and Ilma, like, shakes their head up and down like it's going to rattle off of their neck. Yeah, uh-huh. Okay, we'll do that. We'll do that. Make a note. Uh, we... <laughs> Let's go. Harlow uh, follows behind uh, Ilma uh, slowly, yeah, and then Ilma like walks back and like puts an arm over her. So that was very emotional. That was more emotion than you show uh, than you've shown in years. You need to get overwhelmed like that, but it's just I've always wanted. I and 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 the two kind of act a little bit like sisters in this moment. Uh, Rosalind, you that's a that's a very rare sight uh, because they those, are because most of the time they're kind of arguing over. Those two usually don't well, those are two usually are like repelling usually each other. Usually arguing over whether earth or air is a better element. So, so, so it's more like yeah, they have very strong okay, professional fair enough. opinions yeah. about things. <laughs> but you know, the, the moments that they show sisterly love for each other is seldom, but it does happen. Um, and though that I just. I I smile to myself as I see them being uh, sisterly with each other. And uh, one more thing. Are we able to stop by the infirmary to check Alicia. on... Oh, what's her name? Gosh darn it. Uh, Alicia, yes. I want to check on her okay. at some point. Um, you're not leaving leave town now. quite just yet, but um, I'll make a note of that. Uh, so, uh, you, you guys come to the center of town, um, the main festival attraction is, uh, is kind of over, so they are, um, but, you know, the festival is still going on. There are a few townspeople who were at the festival who have, like, um, but they're kind of leaving in a crowd, and, uh, you know, some people have, like, some worried or awkward looks, and they're talking to each other. A few people were, like, pointing up at the smoke, and then... As you hear another one say, like, oh, no, it looks like it's gone. I'm going to take a look at Ryder. What is Ryder, what does his facial expression um, look like right now? Ryder, r roll insight check. Or can I read from him? Like, from his body language and facial expression. Okay. I'm actually pretty good at these. Ah, oh, gosh darn um, it. That's only 13. a 13. Let me double check. Total. Yeah, that's enough. Um... So, Ryder, you can tell, like, there's definitely a few conflicting feelings that he has. Like, I mean, what based on what he said about Rockman and how his soldiers were there, and then uh, you do the soldiers trying to fight the Empire. It was a very long time ago, but you know that the, the battle there didn't really go well. It was over. Yeah, over it was. It was twenty years, years ago, ago for but... you, and the battle didn't necessarily go well. Obviously, because your town got invaded, which yeah tells you how yeah. that have uh you know who won. Um, you get that like mm -hmm. Ryder isn't thinking about like just his fight with Brutus earlier. He's thinking about like a lifetime of to him what seem to be failures or struggles that have just not gone his way. But you also see that, like, 
he's still finding, like, Jialin is certainly helping, and Priscilla also is obviously, like, helping him. But you can see, like, something deep in him causes him to pick up his feet and keep moving despite, again, what seemed to feel to him like a lifetime of failures, multiple failures. And you see in him the resolve of someone who wants his life to mean something in the grand scheme of who wants who doesn't want those failures to be the last word on his life. Uh, so you all approach the center of the town and uh, Frida, the people like look at you kind of mystified and you can see a lot of people are just like whispering and pointing and like, oh, that's that's her. Like, what? Yeah, it's her. The weird one with the scars? Yeah, the scars. Like, I, I can... Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, my my headphones got unplugged uh, you, at the You just see the, the people that. around town are, like, um, whispering so about they're... you and uh, talking, and one of them's like, it's that one, the one okay. with the scars. All those scars? Yeah, way too many scars, but they're the one who did magic. What? Is scarves the... Is Scarves the key to magic? I understand. I don't know. I've never seen it before. <laughs> as they're walking, uh, as I kind of overhear them talking, um, I'm going to use prestidigitation to kind of shift, have my, all my scars, scarves kind of shift hues slightly, like through a <laughs> rainbow. That's great. Oh. <laughs> And I just kind of smugly the smell on us? Smirk. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, your eyes are working they, correctly. They, I promise. As I we were just random with my friends. Okay. <laughs> uh, but but yeah, you can see that like uh, you, Rita, for the first time in your life, are kind of drawing the attention of a crowd on your merits rather than like being your father's child what do you think that makes frida feel like uh frida feels empowered she, she feels like every choice that she's made has led up to this and that she anyone who ever told her to stop studying stop hoping for magic to come back they were wrong and she's invigorated at the thought and as she realizes that the attention is on her, she kind of looks to the party and then like back to the crowd and thinks about how she saw in the crowd like this wish that they could cheer for Ryder and now what has happened to Ryder. And she says, let it be known that the Empire, after what all of your eyes witnessed, their response was to burn down like our a, friend Ryder's uh, hurt. Yeah, a gasp goes out through the crowd, and uh, there, there's kind of worried faces. Look at Ryder, and there. Yeah, you you can see that like this immediately kind of hurts because he is a very stand-up guy around. And I just say, and I imagine he's a friend of yours as well. Uh, a, so I a think... woman kind of steps up from the crowd and she says, "Ryder, is <laughs> is this true?" And he just very solemnly nods, and she kind of looks down. Gosh, and 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 all of them are you like as the crowd is kind of mulling this over. This um, this teenager from the crowd, a little a little bit younger than Frida, but like by a year or two, he steps up and he's like, "Well, what are we supposed to do about it? You know, Empire does stuff like that all the time." Like, but another person says, yeah, but not in Autumn Hollow. Autumn Hollow's always been so secluded. You know, we we don't really cause trouble, and no one causes trouble for us. Mm. And Well, that was a whole lot of and, trouble. And, and, just and you see the crowd there. is, like, also uh, getting a little wor more worried now. No, all of you, that magic is coming back. I studied for some time, but I imagine with it coming back, and with artifact that used to hold magical power regaining some of that as I stroke the scarf don't lose and hope I at this point I cast dancing lights oh with my racial 
Listen up, everyone. <laughs> and just when a storm. Up. Sorry, go ahead. And I, so I'm just gonna populate six lights around, mm -hmm. uh, sort of like around the party. Um, what one oh. alighting each of our heads? Um, uh, what so like one over all five of us, and then mm. over Ryder. There's... Can I actually cast Minor Illusion to have a flag that looks like the Empire's flag? Fly kind of through one of the dancing oh, lights. Oh, that's and catch an impressive fire and burn. one. And the, uh, Ooh. uh, you see Gilgamesh <laughs> actually like uh gives a golf clap, like mm, impressive. <laughs> Listen, everyone, when it when the storm rolls in, do you lay over, wait for it to knock down all the buildings, and pick up the pieces afterwards? Or do you button down the hatches and prepare for what's coming? Oh. Uh, there, uh, you see, like the mayor of the town actually steps forward and he says, "Do you really, hey. do you really think that that ma is magic really returning? Is it? Can you see it for yourself I, right I, here." I, I pulse the lights at the question: as, "Is magic really returning?" The question isn't whether or not magic's returning. The question is, are you ready to defend? The kindling, so that the flames may burn, and that the empire might Amen. burn with it. Oh, oh. Uh, you, Amen. The, hmm. uh, I would like everyone to like give a group persuasion or performance check at this point, because like you're asking a bunch of like peasants to rebel against a very All powerful right. empire. Yeah. Uh, and I, this I, I is, can this add is that check. check. Everyone has to make give one. me the advantage. All right. All right. I'm. I rolled a 16. Oh, I rolled a 16 on the die for a dirty 20. I have, I have a plus 4 to charisma, but that's I'm... a 6 for me. I rolled a 2. No. <laughs> <laughs> this hey, empire yo, is clearly a darkness that is seeking to smother and suppress your land. And hey, they look with... Yeah. My, my, sorry to interrupt. Oh. My luck is back. I rolled an half. I got 20 on that. Yes! Something oh, about this. Yes! <laughs> Something about this. Well, I mean, I guess Hayden Something to take about it, this incredibly beautiful Hayden, stranger take it away. Was, stood there silently for so long. <laughs> no, no, you continue with your speech. You got this. I was, I was just gonna say that the, the, yeah. So the, this empire has been a darkness that is smothering your lies for far too long, and they thought kindling that fire would shut us up, but they would only illuminated uh, their Austin, own. What did you roll? Shadows. Uh, okay, so that's I another rolled success. persuasion so that is 14. an overall group success. They're like, I'm just having this like mental image of everybody being graceful, and then Jialin is just like, <laughs> I've got an axe. Hey, I was I, gonna hey, say like, I rolled the two. The, they're they're <laughs> thinking about the implications of the beefy Minotaur being able to cast <laughs> that, spells, that's and they're like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think um, <laughs> Priscilla was too worried about magic being contagious to <laughs> to be persuasive. There's just, there's just like a moment where you couldn't hear me because I have a mask on. There's, there's just a moment where Jialin just like reaches out and like Hayden's arm, hoping that it is contagious, and she'll catch it from his like rash. Uh, yeah, if magic were contagious, <laughs> Hayden would be the one to catch it from. Uh... <laughs> That is correct. <laughs> I about Hayden's magical scars that they have from the fall mm -hmm. from heaven. Yeah. So, so yeah, the the town is actually, um, yeah, there there's still a lot of mulling it. Uh, like, there's a lot of back and forth uh, people. There's a lot of talking, and then suddenly from the crowd, this old man is just like, "Yeah, screw the empire." And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, that's Rita, right. That's the point, spirit. Her dad yes. he climbs on top of someone and just shouts, uh, "Burn the empire!" Yeah. And someone's like, "Get off of me!" Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's my dad. He's awesome. He knows a lot. He's famous. But now I never mind. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, so yeah, there's actually, like, a lot of talk about this, like, going up, and they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, um, but then, uh, uh, the, the, uh, but then, uh, -oh. the, like, so, 
So what do we do? <laughs> They're like, oh yeah, that's actually a good question. <laughs> That's Jalen, like... Wait, where's... Is there an Imperial... Do we yeah, see... Where, where are the I, Empire... Like, how are the Empire troops they, responding they, to the fact that we uh, are actively inciting they, rebellion? I, I think they had... Uh, they went back to their base, uh, to, uh... Like, I think they had to drag Brutus back to their base. Like, they had to send a message first, but then they had to take care of their... Alright. And then, for that entail... Is that booth still there? Yeah, that... What? Is their booth still set up, though? Yeah, their booth is. Yeah, their booth is still set up. Is, is their, their booth, booth set up? Their booth, they had a recruiting booth. Can I send uh, a? Yes, can I throw a, a chuck a hand axe right at the booth? Uh, you I, will, I would like to chuck a hand <laughs> yep. axe right yeah, at the yes. booth. Can I that's grab, a that's an eighteen. Can I go grab? Can I go grab uh, Jason yeah, sure. and then go meet with the mayor real quick? Well, while, while that's oh, yeah. while that's going on, as um as an example is being provided by the hand axe at the booth. Jell and will we'll just like she does the beefing and it's hard and like tough thing and she puffs out a little bit. She's like, we may not have magic here yet, but there are other ways to fight the empire. Grab what you can. Don't let them take. You. Don't let your dreams be dreams. Yeah, I. Don't let. <laughs> don't let your dreams be dreams. Don't let them bully you any longer. <laughs> I, I chuck that. I, I throw that axe and and bury it in the Empire's booth, um, and I just sort of look at the kid uh, and say, "You can keep that one." But I mean, we yeah, I we have farming. We, as it happens, those work. I mean, those, they have guns. Those so. work, as it happens, we were trying to find a place. We were trying to find a place for Jason that's, here. That, that's what I'm trying to do right now. Open. We were trying to find a place we for have, Jason here to open up a blacksmith shop. And if you had a blacksmith in yeah, town, that's, that's what I'm to you do might it. just have weapons, huh? Roll, roll a persuasion check Iron with advantage, because you've already sold happening. the people on the idea of like making or of like rebelling against the empire. So theoretically, eighteen. Uh, uh, the, the mayor of the town. He actually nods. He's like, hmm, so. Uh, you, young man, you're a blacksmith, uh, who can forge weapons, and, uh, Jason is like, uh, y yeah, y yeah, 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 I am. And, uh, and the mayor is like, hmm, I suppose if we, we'll, we'll have to do it in secret first, right? Because we gotta, like, prepare, and then we do the rebellion when we're ready with the weapons. Because if, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. yeah. Wait. Yeah. I have an yes, idea. Yes. Yes. Prepare the I'm defenses. Saying. Prepare the weapons. Uh, <laughs> save the cheerleader. Save the what? No, never mind. That's the wrong franchise. <laughs> um, I want to go find my dad and just say, Dad, could we possibly get some of these people oh. your books, books of magic? Uh, well, Maybe uh, some of them could try to learn able themselves. To afford, uh, you know, making multiple copies of my old spell book now. And he holds up just a huge sack of money. <gasps> God, <laughs> he it. owes us some of that. Remember, he owes us some of that. <laughs> uh, Reestablish that. Uh, yes. Uh, Dad, uh, you know, it's, see, it's a sure thing. It I'm was happy. a sure thing. It was not gambling at all. Right. And that's what sure, we're going absolutely. for your other um, parents. <laughs> I'm glad Which you had I faith would... in us, Dad. And I will say nothing either. But are you trying well, to say? I know that you'll be that your. Are you trying to say that your magic? Because I'm not believing that. <laughs> well, I did. He did have a lot of books on divination. That's kind of right. Right. You know. Yeah. It, yeah. That, that's why I got interested in games of chance as a way to expand my knowledge in divination. Right. <laughs> I just kind of look at him a little more seriously and just say, do you think moms and dad will be worried that this happened to me and that so many people in the Empire saw it? Well... Yeah, you, you can see that, like, he's actually, like, taking a breath and, like, thinking seriously now in turn. You've definitely gotten there, and I 
technically you haven't broken any of their laws yet, so I don't think that they're going to come arrest you. Mm -hmm. But you did na just now actively participate in, you know, uh, rebellion, which is a technically a crime to them, but... You too, Dad! Yeah! We're yeah, in it together! Yeah, we're... <laughs> okay. Um, they don't know that yet, so... That's right. I heard a bard singing a song about this once. Something about we're all in this together. <laughs> I... <laughs> no! I, I, I look at some of the crowd and I say, they'll keep a secret, right? And I just kind of uh, look at them. And, and they all, they all nod, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the... the Luke, Lucas does look at you, Priscilla, and says, do the songs again. <laughs> I challenged him to an honorable duel. <laughs> <laughs> the weapon happens to be orange ball. I I swear, <laughs> no. <laughs> the next person who makes a reference oh, no. to that will take a D6 of psychic damage. Come on, DM, get your head in the game, right? Oh, oh gosh, dang it, y'all! <laughs> oh, no. Please. In the meantime, okay. me objecting. Priscilla, you want psychic not my damage? Stop. Uh, while we are, uh, we haven't gotten a long rest yet, right? No. No. Well, I would like to, um, with the party, um, so, as we have Jason help these people get prepared, mm -hmm. perhaps Ryder could stay behind and help organize the resistance here. What of right. us? I, we, let I look at Hayden, we have, we want, I want to assist, but we also have our own goals at hand. You have to repair our vessel and I'm searching for something. Vessel? Mm -hmm. uh, Do we know you... what they're talking about with their vessel? Oh, or has that been hidden from us the entire time? Uh, I think they mentioned it's been hidden, but I think they briefly mentioned they had a ship. I also think, didn't the fight, did the fire, is it still disguised as a rock even with the fire going yeah, on? It, it, it was. Yeah, it was. It was, but Priscilla and Jill and Gialan both saw through the disguise, but the uh -huh. Empire did it. I rem I, re I do remember them rolling high enough to see through it because uh, I remember Vivian making a corny joke about it. <laughs> what? Me? No. I just say to Lana and Hayden, oh, y'all are going to come here and inspire us and all that and then go off your separate way I don't know I think we should keep this fire going right you know well I had no intention of running what I, do, what I know I think... is that more mag more magic will return oh I don't know if I mentioned this to you guys earlier uh, before the uh, even the first round of the tournament, we, I was able to talk to someone who mentioned that they may have found a dungeon entrance. They may have stumbled across one. A dungeon, like as in a prison cell. What a like. Uh, it's a tournament. Oh, I'm familiar it's with where, dungeon. It's, it's where Wick uh, trapped the magic throughout the world. They're trapped in what we have coined as a dungeon. So the sort of like the the locks on magic. Yes, and if we are able to go th crawl through those dungeons and free the magic, then more magic will more powerful magics will return, which will give us I'm, even I'm... more. And, uh, forgive my pun, ammunition against the Empire. And right. Hayden, if I'm not mistaken, I presume that the method that you got here uses with the more abundance of magic in the world, it'll be easy. I, you know, that that's a good point. So, Donna, I think we might have to help them out if we wish to accomplish our tasks. I came here to lift a darkness, and I can't think of any greater darkness in this place than the shroud that is keeping So perhaps my purpose does align with yours. <laughs> I think it does. Okay, fortune teller. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that smack. So we take, oh. we, take, we rest oh, for the man. night, and then we head off to what? this dungeon. But 
Wait, I didn't get very many details from the guy that stumbled across it. Is he just gave? He's the guy that was running the lemonade stick, the flavored lemonade stand. Uh, I think his, the grapes? people around here call Old Man Jenkins or but something I, like that. Oh my gosh! <laughs> if I remember correctly, <laughs> do I remember? Uh, yeah. You, yeah, what is the guy's name that I uh, talked Mark to that I Jenkins. mentioned the dungeon Mark entry? Jenkins was it? Mark Jenkins. We need to find Mark Jenkins. So we can ask, have him give us more details on where, where that dungeon entrance is. Because they're really hard to find unless you know someone who's found an entrance already. You, you, uh, a Roslyn, you hear an old man call from behind you. Mark Jenkins. That's your name, I have. And you turn around and it is Mark Jenkins. <laughs> oh, hi, Mark Jenkins. <laughs> Hello, you Jenkins. know Mark How Jenkins? I got lemonade from him. I came up so did I. I. And I whispered. Wait. What you mean? I'll walk over what? to him and I'll take his hand. I'll say, good to see you again, Mr. Jenkins. Remember, you sold me some lemonade earlier and you mentioned that you had found a dungeon entrance? A dungeon? Oh, yeah. I remember. I saw a dungeon uh -huh. not two days ago. Is she... I have to... I have to go to the next town over to get lemons. It's a very long walk. Uh, and, <laughs> and it was real late at night, so I, you know, went to go to, uh, you know, make camp, and I, uh, and then I accidentally dropped one of my lemons, and then I, you know, went to go bend down and pick it up, and I accidentally knocked it further away from myself, and then I, you know, I went after it, and I knocked it away from myself again, and then... I was also under the impression that life just gave if you. If you think that this dungeon might have a lux, perhaps you could no. either uh, either draw us a map or take us there. Huh? Would you be willing to go with us? Why would Those I go where this entrance is. I, I, I already got my lemons. We'll pay you. Okay. Well, oh. oh yeah, dad, dad. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. The um, Madagascar Crowleys. Can you can you pay Mr. Jenkins a little bit? He, we're gonna go down the road with him. You want me to give money to a strange man to walk you d in, down the road out of town? No, we're we're going with my friends. It's a right. I put my hand on Mr. Madagascar Crowley's shoulder and shoulder and say, "It is a right that all fathers must go through with their daughters." Uh, I'm sorry. Can you repeat <laughs> that? You cut out for me. I said it's a rite of passage that all fathers must go through with their daughters. He makes lemonade, he Dad. Makes lemonade. <laughs> We need to just oblivious to that conversation. <laughs> it looks so much more uncomfortable. With it might even sell grapes if you ask nice enough. Mr. Jenkins, do you have grape lemonade? Or just grapes. He waddles away. Waddle, waddle, waddle. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> we were supposed to take we're a on something to else first. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sitting on like, I mean, we have to take a long rest. <laughs> we fought, we fought all day today. We're gonna be tired. Uh, okay, so, so yeah, he, he waddles back. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. Would you mind, Mr. Jenkins, meeting uh, us on the outskirts of town, first light? Uh, it should be like, uh, north of one of the mile markers, I, I think. Well, could you just draw us a map? I'm not, I'm not a cartographer. All right, so you meet us at the edge of town at the br uh, at dawn. That's Dom. too early. I agree. Half the That's noon. That's noon? too late. I agree. Um, uh, uh, mid mid morning or past morning break. Fair enough. <laughs> Three hours past morning. <laughs> you have All a right. watch. I can um, use. a what? A, a wa watch? A what? What's a watch? Yeah, oh. I can't. I... They don't have those from the look. When the sun time. Can, I point, can I point to the sky and say when the sun is right there, oh. like meet us at the edge of town. Okay. I want to. I want to. Can I? I want to be really clear with this gentleman. When the sun is right where it would be at, like say ten or eleven we may in the morning. I also want to be sure that he understands what part of the outside of town. The side of town where he's gonna take yeah, us to the. Yeah, but do we know the... where that is? That's the question. 
Wait, so is he looking at the sun he, from we, that we did, point? We did, we, point? we did, we did, we were told that it was the north uh, side. No, no, it's, um, it's east. East, okay. Um, I will allow the rest of everyone else to figure that before I, Lana turns in for the night. DM, is there a way that Lana could find a, uh, a set of painting supplies? Um, Ooh. I mean, most shops would probably be. Uh, well, okay. Uh, it would it would probably have to be the next day because most sh- uh, shops would be closed uh, closed during the festival. Um, let's see. Would this town? I, I suppose like it it's a tougher find. Uh, roll me a DC fifteen persuasion or investigation check to try to find. If you want some help, town. I can help you. I have lived here for the last few months. I will. I will accept. I also help. seem to remember that the um, I... the old tabaxi love pies options. Oh yes, uh, yes. Uh, she she would be the one. Oh, so then I can just find uh, it. Yeah, I yeah with Jialin like remembering something that the DM forgot. Um, <laughs> Yes, she she owns a little uh, knickknack and paint store. I would love to go to this shop. I'm going and to buy go supplies. with. Yes, the, I'm going to go with from... because I want to see the. <laughs> yes, hold, hold on. Let me pull up her, her name, Audrey. Okay, so you pull up to Audrey mm-hmm. Nibbins' uh, knickknack and paint emporium. Uh, you see this uh, older Tabaxi woman. Uh, graying fur, kind of rocking back and forth in her chair uh, with her uh, with two of her little kittens on her lap and one's on her shoulder and then another one is uh, uh, right on top of her head and she's like oh, hello there uh, hello um, friend thanks for the um, riveting combat earlier I am hoping and I'm going to show her the split armor I took off the body of the of the MP, the Empire soldier we knocked out. Um, I like this armor a bit sturdier than mine, but I don't really like the whole theme that uh, the Empire goes for. So I was wondering, do you have any pain? Oh, you're trying to fence it, dearie. Oh, why didn't you just say so? I'm an old fence. No, 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 no! I want to paint oh. the armor. That's what bear I mean it. by fence it. You know, you, you know, you make it. It's too recognizable. You gotta change it. I... <laughs> Are you a we, black we want market dealer? We still deal. be recognizable, but no, also this... recognizably the face. You thinks at you. I am talking to a money laundering, t- laundering. Tabaxi owner of Displacer Kittens. You think a kittens. knickknack and paint shop really brings in the money? Come on. Point <laughs> anyway. I mean, you've got a point. You've got a point. Out um, in the boonies out here? Come on. All right. Um, but do you have some painting yeah, yes, supplies? I yes, I and I do. try not to sound like I actual, actual painting supplies. Uh... Yes, I do. I can't get up right now as I am covered in kittens, but, I'll uh... I'll take them. I offer oh. my horns to the kittens. <laughs> I just lost volume on everybody. Hang on a second. Uh, the kittens grab on your horn. I give them, like, a little, like, ride. Like, um, like one of those teacup rides. But it's horns. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a minotaur in a knickknack shop. Nothing will... <laughs> Nothing can go wrong. Positive that. I, I I'm sorry. I lost volume um, for a oh. second. Did I uh, did I get an answer? Uh, on my yes, they do supplies? have painting supplies. How much for the painting um, supplies? One gold piece for like enough to paint your armor. All right. What if I buy three gold pieces? Um, then worth? you can change the way your armor looks three times. I will. Uh, I will gladly. Buy three gold pieces okay. worth of paintings. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm I'm planning on upgrading from Splint at, at some point. So like at some point, and maybe I need to, and I might need to paint a helmet so or two. Paint, like, who knows what other sorts of? Soul? You took the armor. 
I can paint the cart. I can paint the cart. I am not proficient in paint tools, by the way. This is not going to be a good paint job. It's going to be a uh, fun yeah, paint roll, job. Roll dex. You, you should give it. We should give it flames. I'm. Tr that's that's the goal. I'm going to upgrade it using flames and and the, and I'm going to try to. I'm going to design an emblem of the Phoenix Queen on mm -hmm. the pauldron and on the breast, the the center of the breast. Uh, yeah, I'll roll uh, a dexterity or, check. Can roll dex maybe can roll maybe, dexterity maybe buddy. or performance. I'll do performance. That's a twenty-one. Lana, it is surprisingly impressive how. Nice. Oh, act almost like so you, I you, you almost go into like a zen state of mind. You like chant, you push out all other thoughts, and you're just hyper focused on painting this as accurately as possible. And before you know it, like an hour has passed and it looks perfect. So Lana's armor now has on the center of it a phoenix rising from flame. Um, the uh, the pauldrons on the side of the split are on some of the on the pl the, the, the plates are um, have sort of these. Um, it's actually the sort of azure flame, um, marching matching the colors of the feet of the great phoenix. And same thing, the phoenix's body is actually a. a it's interesting. It's a blue bird arising from flame. Um, in addition to that, you see um, some sort of like just uh, just a splash of of um like the, uh, sort of like a dull uh, what color is the as uh, the empire uh, armor usually normally? black red and purple yeah so you, you you get you see all of that sort of washed um clear i don't have inspo art for it. this is all in my imagination um and it has um, so instead of being washed black, it's it's sort of polished up and made silver um, with um, sort of like light rays, kind of breaking at the edges of it. And yeah, that I mean, I do have a pic of Aos, picture of Aos. That's the bird in the back. And this is art by my friend Arden, um, who lived with me for a little while. Um, them and their partner. Mm. They're great. Anyway, yeah. So that's 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 Lana's new art, new armor that she stole from the Empire and repainted to be less Dino themed. Yes. But the things that happen when you make design decisions as a twelve year old that you have to stick with as an adult. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, is there anything uh, anyone else wants to do uh, early that morning? Um, before we leave, I want to, uh, maybe even the night before, I want to find my family and explain the situation with, uh, uh, give any details that I didn't want to share in, uh, a letter that could be intercepted about, um, uh, about Alicia. And, uh, did I ever receive a letter back from them that said that oh. they would take Alicia or did they just uh. show up? They, they did just show up, and I think Yorick did say that he would be willing to take in Alicia. Okay. Then I will thank your... Thank my older brother for his willingness to take in Alicia, and then... Is she... Is she doing any better? Uh, uh, has she actually woken up yet? Or is she still, like, in that you... sleeping state? She she didn't uh, she didn't wake up that state. night, but you check on her again in the morning, and you can see that she is actually like sitting up in her bed, like awake, and uh, and she. As I see her sitting up, I'm gonna run. I'm gonna walk over to her and sit down at the edge oh. of her bed. I'm gonna trying to hold back tears. I don't know if they're gonna come or not and I'm gonna put a hand on her on her shin and be like Alicia sweetheart you're finally awake how are you doing I'm fine where's grandpa and at the mention of grandpa a single tear is gonna roll down her face grandpa Forrest I don't know how to tell you this Alicia I'm really sorry to tell you he didn't make it 
and with everything that was cr crashing and falling down from the uh, from the uh, uh, from that cave collapsing he's gone he's never coming back I'm so sorry Alicia and I'm just gonna wrap her up in a hug as tears are like falling down my face at this point you just see, like, shock and confusion pass over hers. Like, she... Like, she doesn't even fully understand what you just said. Like, it's too big for her to think about. But I have some really good news. I have some... I have some good news for you. Um, my older brother, his name is Yorick. He has a... Uh, he has, has a... I uh, named Melinda, and they have uh, they have uh, some kids, and they're gonna uh, and they're gonna take you back back to uh, where I lived when I was growing up when I was your age, and they're gonna take care of you until we can <sighs> until such point that you're either uh, a little bit more grown up. Or if we can find your parents. I've tried writing letters to them several times, but we haven't been able to find them. She nods so and she says, "Yeah, Grandpa. Grandpa was always mad at them because they, you know, were always off doing their own thing." Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, I I can go live with your brother till Grandpa comes back. Alicia, your Grandpa will not I don't he's not gonna be able to come back and get you he he lives his soul lives with the gods now wherever they are he'll come back and <sighs> you can see this point that it doesn't really um, matter how, she's I know she's pretty young she's, she's yeah what, she's eight? she's like eight or eight or ten she she's not she can't process it, and she... doesn't she, quite understand. She won't... Like, she... Yeah. It's too big for her to understand. She's trying to hold on to that last little bit of... Yeah. I'm sure... As she gets older, she'll... If she ever asks again... And... Obviously, she'll be able to remember her grandpa, so... Uh, you can just see, like, there's no way you're gonna... She, she can't but, process uh, something. I'm like gonna... This. No, I'm gonna. I am gonna take her hand and uh, see if she can stand up um, and walk with me. Yeah, she she's able to stand up and walk. Okay. And as we, as I hold her hand and walk along, I'm gonna take her to wherever my family is staying. If there's, if there's like a uh, uh, they, like an inn in town I, or something, wherever they stay, yeah, I'm gonna that, take um, that. Yorick and Mal. Melinda, they only try to greet her and... Huh? Melinda. That's what I said, right? Melinda? Okay. Yes. Okay. You did say Melinda. Uh, so... So, yeah, they, they they meet, and it's... It's weirdly cordial. Like, they they very... Uh, they, quick, uh, uh, they pick up on the vibe very quickly that, like... In Alicia's mind, she's just staying over with a friend. And this is gonna be a temporary... Uh, and yeah. <sighs> so as I'm handing off to them, I walk over to my brother and my sister-in-law, Melinda, uh, and I say, "I really appreciate you taking her in. She's like, uh, like a little sister or like a niece to me, just like, just like all the other little kids that you guys, have, that you and our siblings have. She's really important." Uh Yo Yorick, he uh, places a hand on your shoulder and he's take care of her as if she were our own. I believe that. I appreciate it very Anytime. much. Thanks. Uh, if you need, do you need? How are things going with the business? Do I know? It, do they have enough to be able to support her as well, or do they need some uh, help with that? I think you try to insist, and then Yorick's like, no, 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 we. We have everything we need. Business has been booming lately, actually. We've, uh... Uh... Come into a lot more money than the store used to make. Uh, well, we still have it, of course. We're That's just... good to hear. 
Just Alrighty then. Hey, um, if you if you need help with any of that, just let let me know. Uh, I'll be able to. I'll find a way to I send can money myself. to you if you need it. Roll an okay. insight check. Well, you are the big brother. I guess you can. Handle it. Okay. With That's a dirty, a dirty 20, twenty. There was a little bit of a bitter sting in his voice. He. You can tell that, like, the thought that... Your brother really doesn't like the thought of letting other people help him. So, yeah, just in general, you know that okay. that is something that grates on him very much. It's a very sore point. And something that he is not okay. good at at all, is letting other people help him. Okay. Uh, okay, if that's the case, then I'll leave Alicia with them and head back towards the rest of the group towards the rest of the group towards my only <laughs> towards friend, only friend. <laughs> so, uh, is there anything else that any or is, does anyone else have something that they want to do early in the morning before setting out if I had time to after visiting the kittens I would like to see uh, I would like to check in on the progress of um Jason acquiring us. So, um, I, I imagine this is what Priscilla wanted to talk with Jason and the, uh, uh, mayor about last night. Uh, they, uh, you, you, uh, find your, uh, you're directed to, like, the outskirts of town. Um, kinda, kinda in this building that's, like, tucked behind two other buildings in a weird way. Like, the zoning of it was, like, really weird. Um, you see that, like, the, uh, uh, Jason is still in the process of, like, uh, s uh directing people and setting thing uh, things up, but you can see that, like, a lot of the people in town have, like, come together to supply Jason with, like, this hidden away blacksmith shop. Uh, and the mayor is uh, already talking about um, sort of different ways to arm and armor the peasantry. Uh, and Priscilla, I imagine that you are also there. Like, this is something that you also wanted to be involved in. Uh, so, so, yeah, she is there. Uh, Jialin? Uh, she would like to, like, help in any way. Uh, Jason turns and he's like, uh, I, uh, I think you helped me out pretty much, uh, you helped me out a lot already. Yeah, but some of that equipment looks and... kind of heavy. <laughs> uh, no, no worries, uh, a lot of the, uh, the towns come together real fast, I, I never expected I'd, uh, you know, don't even have it for a full day and I'm already swamped with work orders, this is, a, uh, it's gonna be a big project. And you can see her, like, kind of smiles and beams at that. She, like, grins like a proud mom grin, and then, like, ruffles his hair. I told you. Uh, that, that you did. That you did. I'm glad I didn't make a bet against you. <laughs> she, she, like, kind of lets out this, like, snort amusement. Doesn't really laugh much. It's just kind of a snort. Okay. Um, uh, is there anything else that anyone would like to do? Um, I suppose I'd like to talk to my dad, maybe get a little bit of money from him um, and uh, oh, uh, see I will if say, he has any advice for us. For winning the tournament, uh, every one of you gets 25 gold pieces. Nice, nice. I'm sure he got a lot more. Uh, yeah, he did. <laughs> I already added that. I got already a... added that. I already added the 25. Okay. <laughs> Jason is like, oh, yeah, I so already did okay. That. So oh, you're going to go to your dad and ask for money. He's like, okay, please no. explain to me what you are, intend to do with asking the strange man to take you out of town. I... Oh, he's just a nice old man who sells lemonade. Um, he's going to show us the entrance of a dungeon. Uh, a dungeon? Uh, what? Yeah. What, what do you think about that? Do you think... I don't know. Any advice? Do you know of any dungeons near here? Uh, I'm sorry, you cut out. What did you say? Sorry. Uh, do you... I asked him if he knew, perhaps, about the dungeon near here. Uh, let, uh, let me see. He might. 
he, he is a scholar and he does know a lot. <laughs> uh, I, I know a little. Well, hmm. I mean, the only thing I know about the magic that was sort of native to this town was uh, that statue they have in the fountain. Uh, according to legend, it it used to belong. Uh, it used to be animate. It used to be a golem that protected yeah. the town from uh, all sorts of dangers, but uh, it just stopped working one day. It was made by someone, uh, Rohan, I think his name was? Rohan yeah. Stone. Yeah, some, something I, like that. I remember you telling me that a long time ago. I realized that when I walked in and saw. Yes. Do, do you th think it could be reanimated? Potentially. I'm... I'm... Honestly, that's been the tough thing with... with... with stealing of magic, because it... Strictly speaking, oh. it shouldn't be possible. I mean, th there are, like, ways to ward against magic, and there are, you know, anti-magic fields that can be produced for a limited amount of time, but... Like, he's not... I doubt, I doubt Lucanus himself could have projected a anti-magic field around an entire planet and sustained it for over a hundred years. That's not. That doesn't make it uh, even for a god of magic. And Wick is no god of magic. Frida just kind of stares off for a moment, thinking of the implications of anti-magic being magic, uh, but then looks back to her dad and says. Do you think maybe Wick gave back some of what he took? Do you think he has anything to do with me being able to use magic again? I don't. It is curious that you you can see that like your father tries to do a little magic himself, but nothing happens. And he kind of like stares at his fingers like quizzically like he knows he sh like he should have cast a spell just now, but nothing happened. And he's like, "There is only a room." I would you mind if I tried your scarf on for just a moment? The the newer one, the the one that you said was magical. Right. Sure. He, um. Yeah. yeah I had your father it puts on uh that scarf over the two scarves he's already wearing. Obviously, um, that that's how you wear <laughs> scarves. Yes. <laughs> and he tries a spell, and, and no, no, that rules that out. He, uh, un he, uh, he uncurled, uh, he unwraps it and puts it back over. Something about what you said to him at his prison, it definitely, you definitely struck some kind of chord with him, but I don't, I don't think he's the one who necessarily released magic, if if he indeed did so at all. It's possible right. that someone managed to unlock one of the dungeons, but I I can't imagine anyone that would have been. Hmm. She's just kind of Definitely. pondering this. Oh, uh, sorry, no, cut uh, out. Uh, you go. Um, she just ponders this and just looks back to her dad and says, I know I've asked you this before, but now that I know what it feels like what what did it feel like for you dad when you could do magic uh, well it's it's less one feeling than it was than it was the potential you know like with magic mm. almost any could put your mind to when you could you could do it uh it, <laughs> and you know it and it's that feeling of like you know, some people might say it's power or something, but, right. but it's not. But it's not power in the same way you think of like exerting strength or force over others. It's, it's the potential. You know, that it it's could a, be anything. Yeah. And it's a vision that you make real. Yes, vision. It's <laughs> Frida. I. I don't think he he looks again at his hand and he's like I I do not believe in Umbar 
or Ambar as strongly as you. And uh, you know that those are like elven words for fate. Um, they they have different specific meanings, mm. but um, like Ooh. Ambar and Umbar is like choice. Both of them are related to fate in a way. I can do a bigger deep dive, uh, dive on those elven concepts if you'd like, but I am intrigued. <laughs> uh, yes. So, uh, so your father, he says, uh, so I don't, I do not believe in them as strongly as you, but I take my lack of magic and your magic as, as a sign of fate. I think as much as I would want to accompany you to the dungeons, I do not think that it is my path to do so. I know it's. I know that sounds like cowardice, but I. No, I understand. I feel like. It feels. Yes. No, that just this group that's come together is something special, and even Ryder was talking about his fate, and Jialin, our friend, made a very interesting observation that he was kept alive for a purpose, given a longer life for a reason and that sits with me and even if your fate isn't to come with us and be a part of this group, you taught me what you did and you and elves being able to live as long as they do, you being able to see that I think even if on some greater level it didn't mean much it it's the only reason that I feel I was able to do what I did, and I guess all that to say you've you made a big enough part already, and I just want to make you proud. Well, he he grasps he wraps his arms and pulls you in tightly, and he says, "No act of magic could possibly make." Mm -hmm. I just hug him tight. Smile. He kisses the warm hug. He lets it, and then he, he kisses you on the forehead and says, "And I don't think I'm." Umbar is a clash of wills, it is said, and hmm. it is not my will that you should go through these journeys without any of mine. So I think that my my fate does not I think. I think I have much to prepare for when you return. Um. And uh, and you can see that uh, he starts packing up his things. He's like, I'm going to go and return to our home. And when I return, I will return with uh, your your parents, obviously, in tow uh, with me. And, mm -hmm. <laughs> and every tome of magic that I tried to keep you from reading, I think they're worth a second <laughs> book. I'll always be thankful that you're my father. And for the role that you've played, and I imagine will continue playing. I love you, Dad. May the, may the gods Thank watch you. over. You as well. And with with that, um, your father packs away uh, his things, and the two of you go in separate directions. You towards where you're going to meet up with your friends, and he down the destiny he has chosen. I won't get too deeply into the concepts right now, but you... One thing one thing that I will say is... One thing he was referencing is the idea that fate is not decided by other people. It is the clash of your decisions versus all other... Clash of them. Mm. And, and so your father... Mm in this moment has set his will into motion, has chosen his fate. And you, Frida, have chosen yours. That's beautiful. Like, yeah, that's kind of that's, that's my conception of reality, so I think that's really cool. She'll just smile um, and make her way to her friends. And as everyone stands together, ready to follow an old man into the woods, 
we will call it a night.